This video is sponsored by Gate.io. If you set an account up using the link in the description, you'll get 25% back on all your spot and futures fees for life. Gate.io. Hello everybody, welcome back. Real quick video then, the afternoon update. We might as well do XRP because we did that yesterday and look where we are right, <laughs> right now. That four hourly pump signal certainly kicked into fashion. Um, it's almost uh, like kind of unbelievable, but it, it's, you know, good timing, I suppose. Good timing. So as I was saying yesterday, you know, don't get too excited until we're outside of the descending triangle. And we're outside the descending triangle already, less than 24 hours or about 24 hours after yesterday's video. So fair play. That's worked out quite nicely. So what we'll be looking to do now is obviously FOMO into this and get wrecked tomorrow with the FMC meeting. Obviously, that's, that's, that's a joke. Uh, what we really would be looking for would be to see if we can build a base above this 200 exponential, which is sitting here about 40 cents. For, well, yeah, that was just basically 40 cents, 14 and a half cents. So it's early days. We've got to see how this candle takes us and um, see if this is a, you know something that's just going to get sold off throughout the next day or two or week or wherever. And basically, this just becomes a fake out. I think it's less likely to be a fake out, to be honest with you. As I was saying with that video yesterday about the market cycle and blah, blah, blah. We'll be looking for this to complete um, at some point down the line and uh, and then go on to make one of these tear up moves. If we think about the last market cycle when it finally did break out of the descending triangle um, from the beginning to the end, it took about hmm, 280 days to reach its peak and probably would have gone on a little further as well um, if it wasn't for um, the SEC lawsuit and things like that and sort of nipping this rally in the bud. Although, you know, looking back at it, I suppose it was relatively overheated, but Money Flow Index actually on the weekly only peaked over here just outside the comfort zone at 80. So... Uh, yeah, it, it should have gone on to make a new all-time high in all fairness. It just wasn't allowed to do that. So as of right this very moment, we can see that it's actually looking quite good, but yeah, reaching the top of this Bollinger Band. So again, with the FOMC meeting coming in tomorrow, uh, and obviously the Fed talking today, let's have a look at the markets, just generally speaking. So this is the S&P reaching its 200 exponential. This is the death cross retest. So this is something that we'd be thinking about shorting from if you really wanted to short the S&P. You know, there's enough reason to believe that this is a buy the rumour, sell the news type uh, rally that's going on right now. There's there's no reason to doubt that. That's a perfectly reasonable thing to, to think about. Uh, and if you're going to sell the rally, um, uh, you know, sell the rip, then you then, then you do it at that level. Again, it's just like anything. As we were playing the golden crosses on the way up, it doesn't take long to know that you're wrong. You can take a position around here at 4,000, basically, you know, perfect example of a, of a, of a uh, horizontal and a, and a moving average and a psychological level all kicking in at one place. But Bollinger Band strategy would say that it was more likely to stay above here than, than not. But I would put a lot of focus on that uh, that death cross retest uh, for what could be a sell the rumour um, coming into tomorrow. Euro as well, uh, looking like it really wants to try and push up and break out of this range that we've been in. So the top of the range being a Bollinger Band. So obviously that's going to be a bit stretchy. That's the nature of Bollinger Bands. They, 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 they expand with volatility. So that's looking quite good at the moment. Personally, not a massive fan of uh, of entering at this level you do you, you enter at supports you know the perfect example of a golden cross retest you know you don't take long to know that you're wrong don't take long to know you're wrong doesn't take long to know you're wrong and you're right but right now i'd still be looking at this as being effectively range bound and with the fomc tomorrow we don't know exactly what they're going to say i think 50 is up off the table i think we're talking 25 basis points now i think that's the most likely scenario that's going to play uh, and as a result of that should probably see the euro continue with this direction but you know that is basically gambling isn't it really if you haven't got a position in the euro from back down at that golden cross retest there's no point in getting a position in it now and um, same thing with the s p really the, the you know i would i'd be I, I think that we're likely to see some downside from here, but we just don't know. I mean, like I say, the FOMC meeting is going to—it's it's, it's probably the biggest one so far because it's going to be the first one that's reactive to current situation outside of uh, inflation and CPI. So it's definitely an important, an important one, and one that I will certainly be interested to watch the markets respond to. But again, as we're speaking about XRP, uh, and it is an XRP video. Worked out very nicely. Actually, actually, as expected. I know you don't like that. Some people really hate that, but it's true. It did do that. Uh, but I would, I would put this move currently on simply just the pump signal that we referred to yesterday uh, on the um, on the four hourly. And so, if we're thinking about four hourlies, what we really want to see now is obviously we're getting a golden cross forming at the moment, which is nice, right down there. It's a golden cross. There'll be a simple moving average golden cross probably over the next. Uh, 
day or two. And then what we really want to see from then on would be all these moving averages on the four hourly cross outside of this descending triangle. And then shortly, I'll say shortly after that, it'll be quite a little while after that, maybe in the, in the, the next couple of weeks, we'll see the same thing happen on the daily. And that'll add a lot more weight to this descending triangle being a thing of the past. But obviously, if we're thinking about that, these moving averages are going to creep out in this kind of trajectory. We should also think about moves down back into the 30s and then from there see if we can take that opportunity again to make some more serious gains on XRP. Which again, it's not a sleeping, uh, it's, it's, it's not a sleeping giant that everyone says it is. It's not um, completely rubbish like a lot of people say it is. It's a chart that's old. Uh, and that's why I like it. There's rhythm in charts that are old because all moving averages and any indicators, is, is, all indicators, are the only thing that can be fed into an indicator, the only data that goes into them is price, volume and time. And um, as this chart is probably coming on to about 13 years, uh, no, about 10 years old now, it's got time. It's got a large component of time. So the indicators do seem to respond well to signals. And this is one of the reasons I've always liked it. This is why you look at these other coins that have only been on the market for you know a split second. Uh, you know, there's no there's 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 no history there. There's no there's no way to map out its um, personality if, if you want to look at it like that. Because um, we don't know how it will respond. All all charts respond uh, differently to the same indicators, and this one responds usually pretty well. So I'm quite bullish on the way that it looks right now. I know that's easy to say because there's a big green candle, but obviously recognize that I made a video about this yesterday. And so, yeah, like I say, it was, uh, there was a signal there. But let's not get too excited. Let's see how the day closes and, uh, and over the next week or so, see if we can build a base outside of this descending triangle with moving averages that creep out of it that emphasize the support that should be there when we come down into those lower zones. If we do, they might get foamed into. Captain Noobmaster is going to be loving this right now. He's going to be waking up right now, you know, and uh, asking his mum for some more pocket money to pump into XRP. Right, thank you for watching. Hope you have a nice day. Take it easy.